It's not much more than a year since demolition work on our old faculty building started. That was in December 2012. Half a year later, in May 2013, John Wardle and Adair Tarani led us on a video tour of the construction site. At that time, it was still a big hole in the ground. Well, it's now February 2014, and as you're about to see, the view has changed completely. Construction on all six levels of the building is well underway, and both the immense scale of the building and the intricacies of its design reveal themselves more and more. Come with us as Nadir Tarani and John Wardle step onto the construction site, this time to witness the astonishing progress that's been made in the past months. There's a vast array of factories on the eastern and southern seaboards of Australia that are currently making primary elements of this building to be brought on site at critical moments and coordinated with all of the on-site works. The precast industry here operates for Australia what the steel industry does for the United States. An amazing organisational overlay is captured in the progress that we're seeing on site at the moment. I was here the last time less than six months ago and already the building is almost topped off. That's quite amazing. The rapid way that this sort of creative coalition between our two practices has worked, some things came very early in the process and some as part of the momentum that was gained during the journey of design. Sometimes we'll see a great moment of the pure structure that we hadn't actually anticipated on the drawings and asking permission of the builders, can we actually quickly revise? Generally small moments as we see things occur in this vast one-to-one -one scale model. Some of the changes that we've tried to undertake during the construction period are to dumb the building down, make it rougher, make it a raw vessel, a kind of infrastructure for the students to take over. One of the dangers in buildings like this is to try to over-articulate it, to make it too delicate. So whenever we've been able to, we've looked back at the building to think of it as something that can be appropriated by the students. The Y stair is an exemplary structure. It does not have any support holding it up. It bridges from one side of the building all the way to the other. And it actually broadens the, the range of connections via its particular configuration of this central landing that's linked into two parallel rises of staircase. If we had designed a normative stair, it would have forced you to go around and around the atrium which would be completely irrational. It had to be prefabricated as a truss, its trusses embedded and concealed within the railing components, fabricated off-site, and essentially pulled up by a crane and inserted into the building. Libraries can't do just one thing. They're no longer the quiet spaces that they once were. They have to anticipate the demands of active scholarship, it needs to be much more flexible and it needs to cater to many different kinds of activities. They have to be both truly open, bustling and at times noisy spaces where collaborative activities are encouraged and spaces that are secular and quiet and separated. Now buildings usually are built from the ground up and certainly in this building also we have built the ground up but in a kind of extraordinary structural and symbolic feat, we've also turned the building upside down, suspending the studio from the ceiling down in something that is effectively quite magical. The endeavor there was to create something central in this space that is truly spectacular and actually draw in one of the other important aspects of any education, which is curiosity. The roof is composed of LVLs, a laminated veneer lumber. Uh, they span approximately 22 meters. Essentially, the glazing system is placed above it, detached from it. And the idea was that we would use a naturally renewable resource to create the structure of the building. And it's good uh, from an ecological point of view, but it's also an innovative use of wood. From a technical perspective, 
the structure of the roof is completely in sync with the suspension of the hanging studio. These two work in tandem with each other. And in fact, that's all the structure that they require. The length of the beams was a challenge both from the manufacturing point of view, but even more so the logistics of traveling with these beams at nighttime through the city, picking them up in the cranes and putting them into position was part of its major challenge. All of the elements of this building are in effect designed to be a form of built pedagogy. In some ways, uh, the spaces are there to be exemplary uh, as spaces of learning, but also as didactic instruments. It's a delight to be here on the site of the new building for the Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning. It's going to be a great addition to the campus and it really does herald a whole new era for the faculty. So I want to say thank you to everyone who's worked so hard to make this possible. We're halfway through the building, you can see it coming out of the ground. It is a spectacular new place for teaching great students. Your support has been crucial to making this possible.